at 601. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, October 13th, the regular board meeting of the Sacramento Metro Fire Department. Um, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? I sure will. Good evening, everyone. I will begin with Director Gould. Present. Rosalie is absent this evening. Director Wood. Present. Director Sheets. Present. Director Rice is still working on logging in, so he is absent for now. Director Jones. Here. White. Here. Clark. Present. And President oh. Saylor is turning it back to you. Thank you very much. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the pledge to the flag, if you would all stand. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on our agenda tonight is the Metro Cable announcement. The open session meeting is videotaped for Cablecast on Metro Cable 14, replayed on Sunday, October 16th at 12 noon, and Monday, October 17th at 9 p.m. on Channel 14, webcast at metro14live.sacccounty.net. This is now the public's opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within district jurisdiction, including items on or not on the agenda. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers tonight? We do not have any speakers in the room. Art, if you want to allow everyone to unmute themselves for the chance to publicly comment, if they so wish. Yes, attendees, you now have the ability to unmute yourselves if you would like to present anything to the board at this time. No response. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is consent agenda. Um, if we don't have any questions or comments, um, I will entertain a motion in a second. Madam yeah. Chair, I make a motion without consent. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Director Gould. Aye. Wood. Aye. Sheets. Aye. Rice, I believe, has joined by phone. Maybe not. Um, Jones. Aye. White. Aye. Clark. Uh, aye. And Sailors. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> the next thing on our agenda tonight are action items. The first action item is image trend contract renewal and test site inflammation. Deputy Chief Mitchell. Thank you, President Sailors. Good evening, directors, everybody in attendance. Um, tonight before you, uh, staff is seeking approval for an extension of our current contract with image trend for an additional three years and also adding a test site to our ability um, here to be able to test things before we go live with them in the software program. We've been with image trend since September of 2014 began with the implementation of our EPCR program at that time. And then in 2020, we upgraded that system to add in the inference reporting as well as um, a module for CRV and arson investigations. Um, it allows for the production of, the, of all of our reportings. It allows us to do data collection and also reporting out from that, um, as well as tools for budgeting, grants, and other things to pull, pull data from. Um, the investigation module is fully uh, implemented to permit the fire investigators to document all of their investigation um, processes, as well as witness statements and things like that. And then the continuum module, um, that's the part of it that allows our, our active data monitoring to enhance our patient care and statistical gathering and things such as those. Um, the addition of the test site, as I mentioned, is going to make it possible for system updates to test them out before we go live and also allow our folks to have some training involved in that. Um, we've had some issues over the last few years of updates coming and then being um, having to push them out before anybody knows how to use them and then we're, we're reacting to it. So this addition is going to help us out in that regard. 
Um, the cost of the renewal of the image trend contracts uh, is $175,884.72, which um, is included in this fiscal year budget. Um, it is also inclusive of a 3% increase year over year, which is standard for what we've seen since the last few contracts we've had with image trends, so no change there. Um, and then the implementation of the actual test site itself is $7,000 for the first year, and then it continues to go up and then hold steady at $10,500 moving forward. Um, the funds, uh, although not initially budgeted uh, this year, the funds for that program, the test site, as we identified the need, are going to be transferred. Um, it's not going to incur anything to a detriment. They're coming from a fund that we were able to save some money from on a bid for a contractor to do some educational opportunities, actually, that are going on in the district right now. So no, no fiscal impact, per se, to more money coming out of the budget than what we already have. Since the software has been expanded in its use and its further integration in our agency, as well as our regional partners, other fire agencies, as well as the hospital system, um, it, those changes have happened since the last time. We wanted to make sure we brought this forward as an action item to you tonight, um, as well as recommend to you that the board of directors approve the image trend contract renewal for three more years. That's the end of my report. I'll take any questions. Um, Director Gould, go ahead. Chair. Chief. We've used this organization for quite a long time. I'm assuming that we're one of their larger customers. As far as they're a national company, so I don't have the information on other users. However, they are well known throughout the industry, throughout the country, and, and use. I see them all over the place. And okay. And, so, and is it pretty typical that given the years of use that we have in our history, that we're still paying for a test site? So the, the, yeah, let me, the test side itself is for us to look at the updates that are coming and be able to run through them sure. and make sure that we know them. But yeah, I, 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 I can't speak standard. specific. Yeah, to add that capability is a standard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good, thank you. Do any other directors have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that report. Okay. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we adopt staff's recommendation for coach track. I'll second. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Director Gould. Aye. Wood. Aye. Sheets. Aye. Jones. Aye. White. Aye. Clark. Aye. And Sailors. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our action item list is number two, ratification of the resolution to extend teleconference of board meetings, government code 54953E-3. Um, once again, this will give us the opportunity to um, have our meetings um, in person and also via Zoom. Um, I'll take a motion and a second on this item. Madam Chair, I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Director Gould. Aye. Wood. Aye. Sheets. Aye. Jones. Aye. White. Aye. Clark? Aye. Ann Sailors? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Our next item in under action items, number three. In number four, we will do after our closed session. Um, next up are reports for president's report at our next board meeting on October 27th. The cancer awareness engine will be at headquarters. That's the one where they wrap it blue and pink. I would like to invite all of my fellow directors to join me in viewing the engine beginning at 5.30 at our next board meeting. Is that the 27th, did you just say? Yes. Okay. Is that right? Are we having a meeting on the 27th? Yes. Excellent. Yes, October 27th. Typically, we have one in the month of November and December. We're in October. Oh, no, October. we're still in October. Oh, oh you're talking about October 27th. <laughs> 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 you were on that asterisk <laughs> got pushed, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. We're all caught up now. The next item for reports is the fire chief's report. Good evening, Chief. How are you? I'm doing good tonight. Good evening, directors. Great to see all of you here and on Zoom. Uh, a few updates tonight. The first one is a new hire. I'd like to welcome Allison Mayhew, who was hired as a community relations specialist in the community services uh, division. She started on the 10th 
uh, a long history in the news media and uh, worked for Fox News before coming over here. She grew up in the community and will be a great addition then for us. On retirements, congratulations to engineer Doug Bowen. Uh, he retired on October 7th, uh, 2022. Also congratulations to EMS system technician Marcy Mateo on her retirement on October 10th. On recruitments, we have also another opening in the community relations specialist. Uh, that one closes on the 14th coming up here really soon. As far as meeting and some conferences, on the 19th of um, September, I invited to the NFPA uh, Urban Fire Forum. And one of the things that has become very uh, a lot of attention out there is what we all in the state of California has done with the ambulance patient offloading time. And so we did some presentations, myself and uh, Fire Chief Donnelly from uh, Washington, D.C., presentations, and then talked about really the items that were brought forward that we will see in the 2023 or 2023 legislative cycle coming up as far as what do we do and what are some of the recommendations for reducing patient offloading. Uh, had an opportunity to meet the, the Sac City Fire. Uh, the new fire chief, Chris Costamagna, and his deputies. Uh, when we had first got here in 16, we started that process of sitting down and meeting, and we can that on. And also myself and, and President Sailors had an opportunity to go to his swearing in, along with some of the deputies, went and uh, congratulated Chris Costamagna on the new role as the chief of the city. Uh, labor management was held on the 28th. That was our monthly meeting. This month it was down at the Union Hall. We probably had 10 items that are on the agenda. We also had a number of items that were carryovers that we were able to clear off that agenda for moving forward. Um, on the 30th, myself, along with President Sailors, Director White, uh, Chief Swagman in law and Brenda Briggs, I think was all of us that were there, were able to go down to the 22nd Annual Public Safety Community Appreciation Luncheon uh, put on by um, Anne Marie and Marie uh, Schubert. Um, and the, really the focus on it was raising um, awareness on fentanyl related deaths. And um, Director White got up and it was one of the, the panel members. And one of the things that I thought was really something that I hadn't really heard a lot of, but the changing of it from an overdose to a fentanyl poisoning. And, and changing the framing of that and, and how is that happening. Uh, I know that on our two by two that we then had with Rancho Cordova with Director Jones and, and Director Woods, we again talked about that and, and what, our, what is our role? How do we share our statistics on overdoses and then the use of Narcan and the availability of Narcan, whether it be in schools or in homes or the ability to see uh, or the ability to have that out, um, as we all know, with the uh, poison of fentanyl, the ability to reverse that is with, with Narcan. So it was a very impactful day down there. Thanks for everybody for attending. Also had lunch with the Citrus Heights Police Chief, uh, Director Jones and Director Woods, along with staff, had our two by two with Rancho Cordova. Um, Cyrus, the um, city manager had just announced uh, his retirement at the end of the year, so it was great to see him and have an opportunity to talk. And as you, President, said, we have the Cancer Awareness Engine, CAE, right? Cancer Awareness Engine out and about, and we'll have it here at the next board meeting. That ends my report, unless you have any questions. If not, Chief Mitchell, I think, has the ops report next. Hello again, um, and just to the point of the cancer engine, a uh, cancer awareness engine, um, engine 61 during that time frame will be functioning as that, that um, apparatus. We're moving it around the district. So that the week of the board meeting, that will be at engine 61 and they'll be here. Um, so a few items tonight, uh, statistics wise, uh, we've run 6,089 total incidents since our last report on September 22nd, but it's an average of about 290 incident calls per day for our folks. About 188 fire incidents have been responded to, about an average of nine calls per day. 
Um, recently, our folks actually this Tuesday on the 11th uh, had an opportunity to attend the Mercy San Juan Run Review Program that goes on regularly over there. Um, this time we had eight of our members there in attendance. Um, it allows an educational opportunity for our free hospital and hospital care providers to review specific incidents, any notable incidents, things that had some educational value or some um, items to learn from. Um, they, they have those regularly. Like I said, they did review several of the cases. Um, and they really allow our members to get a better understanding and the hospital staff about how they can work to together more efficiently during the radio reports or during the pass off process. Uh, Medic 23, as well as six of our members from Academy Class 22 1, were in attendance. The next meeting for that will be in um, the annual holiday run review meeting in December, um, December 14th. I'm also happy to report that on October 1st, we started a new um, staffing callback procedure. This was in collaboration with the staffing team and local 522, as well as management, to come up with some mitigations for what we've been experiencing as far as mandatory callbacks, um, assisting with our daily staffing management. Um, although it's very, very early on, we're only a few weeks into this, we are starting to see data that's trending towards less mandatory callbacks, which was, was our goal. Um, I do want to really um, reinforce the appreciation of the collaboration between 522 and us to get that out there as a pilot project for a year to try it out and make sure that um, we do the best on continuing to adapt to the to the environment we're working in. Um, like I said, that we will need to wait a little bit longer before um, we draw final conclusions on the effectiveness of the procedures, but it is very promising right now. And then the last thing I have um, timely with the chief's report on the fentanyl overdose uh, epidemic that's going on. On October 8th at 0500 hours, engine 24 and AMR 801 were dispatched for a possible overdose incident. In route, fire dispatch updated there were a total of three patients on scene, with two of them unresponsive and chest compressions being performed by bystanders. Engine 24 initially added squad 24, medic 109 and medic 23 to the incident as well. The captain was very in front of it. Once they arrived on scene, the crews managed all three patients that were suffering from the effects of a possible fentanyl overdose. Engine 24 Company Officer Captain Stephen Perry managed what could only be described as a very chaotic scene with three separate critical patients going on at the same time and managing all those members. Engine, Engine 24 and Squad 24's crew maintained care of those two patients under CPR while being transported and assisted with treatment en route to the hospital. Great, I just wanna say again, great job by all those members involved for maintaining their composure, professionalism and high, high level of patient care during a very difficult incident but it does reinforce what the chief was talking about and what um, District Attorney Schubert was bringing forward about the fentanyl epidemic and what we're gonna do moving forward. So if there's any questions into my report. Thank you. Thanks. Up next we have uh, our fires local, 522. <clears throat> Good evening, directors. Um, we too would like to wish Marcy and Doug uh, well in their retirement. They're gonna be missed and welcome Allison to the organization and we'll be bringing her into 522 next week. Um, since we've met last, there's been a lot because it's been a little bit since we had a meeting. Uh, multiple service delivery meetings have taken place. And um, I wanna thank everybody in those groups who continues to put in the hard work to look at um, some of our opportunities to change deployment. There's a lot of conversation around adding ambulances around potentially BLS ambulances come November 1st as the chief has directed. And just like Chief Mitchell shared, by adding that first responder, Squad 24, and, and coming together, labor management, looking at that and the service deliveries committee recommendation, I think those examples, <clears throat> along with others that we have, uh, really solidify that as a jumping off point to look at how we can increase our services going into 2023 and 2024. Um, it's exciting to add an additional first responder and then hearing the impact that they have time and time again. Um, that's a really positive thing. And, and that's not happening by accident. There's a lot of work going into that. So thank you to everybody that's doing that. We also, uh, like the chief said, had a labor management meeting. It was very productive, got through a number of items. So um, appreciate the opportunity to continue to have those meetings. And I think we're doing things that benefit the membership and the community and the organization every time we get together. Negotiations, we've had a handful of those as well. You'll get reports tonight. We're still um, charging forward, trying to be as productive as possible and, and trying to come to a place where we can ensure that we don't come out contract at the conclusion of this year and start to focus on the other things that are in front of us that can be uh, can take some attention and be very positive. Um, we did implement the alternative callback model that came from 522 members. We, we didn't just uh, move forward blindly in that. We've been talking about it for actually years and, and really aggressively for eight to nine months um, since 
coming into this position. We wanted to make sure that it was vetted through and that the membership had an opportunity to voice some of their concerns and, and talking about that with management. And now that we are moving in that direction and, and the pilot is underway, we have seen some positive outcomes from it. So again, like we've said time and time again, we don't take the staffing challenges lightly. Um, the men and women are working their tails off to keep companies open. And now in some of these changes that we put our heads together to put forward, we're seeing some positive results. Um, good luck to everybody taking the engineer's test this week. So at the completion of this test, we are hopeful that we will have the engineers ranked full for the first time in, let's throw a number out there, 17 years. It's been a long time <laughs> since we've had engineers uh, in every seat in every firehouse. And I think with the qualified folks taking the test this time, the amount of vacancies that we have, I'm thinking this is the one where we will actually have a list standing. So good luck to everybody. <clears throat> Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to participate in the Star Six Charity Golf Tournament to support our brothers and sisters at Sacramento Sheriff um, just last week. And uh, that was a very positive event, as well as very fortunate to participate in the Legends Golf Tournament that CLC puts together. Um, being out there with Director Clark, other members of 522, um, it's just a really good fundraiser benefits the United Way and some other groups. And so that was a good thing. And I was glad that we had members that participated in that. General membership meeting today was well attended. Um, still looking at other things that we can do as a group to ensure that we're offering a high level of service to our communities. And uh, I did today get the honor guard to schedule as requested, um, posting our colors for us here at our November uh, board meeting, which I do believe there's only one in November, correct? Um, and that one on the table. Uh, I also have asked that they give a presentation for what they do for not just our community, but really across the country yes. and, and all the strong work that they do and their, their level of commitment. So pencil that on your calendars for um, November 10th. And to kind of reiterate both what Chief Mitchell and Chief Harm said about the public safety luncheon on the 30th, um, I, I didn't realize the impact that the fentanyl poisoning had had on Director's White family specifically. It was very powerful to hear him and share his story um, and just the overall awareness in the room 522 was a sponsor of that. So we had a table right up front. I got there a half a minute late. So I was facing away from the stage. And when they put the, the video on, I had to turn and face the screen and all my 522 brothers and sisters were behind me. As they played the video that shared the impact on our local families as they've lost their loved ones. I mean, I'm a softie. I choke up every time they show those videos of people coming home from the military and surprising their kid at school. I just kind of came unraveled facing that video and I couldn't turn around and face the rest of the room for a good solid minute. It impacted me significantly enough that I went home and shared it with my son and wife. And we had another emotional moment. And then I shared that video over our app with our membership. And I got multiple messages from brothers and sisters here at 522 who have experienced very challenging situations with their own loved ones. I had no idea. So this threat, this attack on our kids and not just not just our kids, really all of our loved ones uh, is real. And so I, I would recommend that if anybody watching Zoom or in the room or, or on the board hasn't gone to one pill can kill sac.com, you go and listen to the stories and we come together to try to find whatever solutions we can. We'll continue to respond as, as engine and squad and medic 24 did, but we got to get out in front of it because by then it's usually too late. So with that, I appreciate your time and uh, I am contained unless you have any other questions. Can you repeat that again with a, uh, one pill can it's kill? It's one pill can kill sac.com. Okay. The one pill can kill movement. There's a lot of different links um, uh, nationwide. There's a specific one to Sacramento that shares stories of our local families that have lost loved ones and been impacted. And our own director White is on that side. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next up, committee and delegate reports. Um, executive committee uh, to be determined. Um, communication Center JPA, Deputy Chief Wagaman. Good evening, President Sailors and Directors. Uh, the JPA Dispatch Board last met on October 11th. Uh, during that meeting, we had the opportunity to meet uh, the part-time new medical director at the dispatch center, Dr. Nike. She's also the now full-time uh, new uh, medical director at Consume This Fire. Uh, she's already hit the ground running, uh, having some one-on-ones with our dispatchers, having some 
um, um, sit-alongs as well as uh, scheduling some ride-alongs out in the field to, to fully understand uh, what it's like to work within public safety um, within the Sacramento region to fully support our dispatchers in the EMD process. Uh, during that board meeting, we had four action items, uh, all of which were unanimously approved. Now, item number one uh, was an increase in first contribution, or I'm sorry, increase in Kaiser premiums uh, uh, that exceeded the ceiling uh, by our contract obligations with local 115 856. Uh, with that increase of 6%, there is uh, some language in the contract that states there would be 50 50 uh, sharing of that increase of 6%. So that uh, fixes that language within that contract. Um, and um, just to make sure that we're adhering to uh, the contract language that we agreed to. So that is currently fixed moving forward. Uh, the next item is the, just an update to the organizational chart within the center. Uh, with the addition of the administrative manager, we moved the finance uh, division back under administration where previously uh, it was held just under the chief executive director. Next was an updated update to the job description for executive assistant. Uh, we moved that person to a confidential status just due to a lot of the work that that person performs day in and day out. And the last item was uh, approval of a strategic plan proposal through IEC, which is Integrated Communication Strategies. Uh, both Jose and Jerry, they're going to be the ones that uh, will help us develop uh, the, the next strategic plan for the dispatch center for the next five years. Again, looking forward to that process, working with the executive staff there, uh, as well as uh, both Local 150 and 856. If you have no questions for me, our next uh, meeting is going to be held on November 8th, 0900 hours here at the Metro Board Chambers. Thank you. Go ahead. Chief, thanks for that report. Can you give me an idea of how we're doing on recruiting dispatchers? Yes, yeah, so uh, we're updated at every board meeting how many critical tests are being taken, how many are being passed, and how many people are moving on to the process. Uh, hiring is a continual process. As we finish one academy, we ramp up the next academy and we continue to hire. Uh, as of right now, there are five positions short in the dispatcher one position. Again, we added additional dispatch positions, so we're looking good there. Although we still have some vacancies, we still have some work that needs to be done. Still is a priority in the agency to make sure that we get those positions filled. Uh, turnover is still very consistent with what we were seeing nationwide. It's a very challenging job. It's not for everybody. Thank you. You bet. Thank you for that report. Next up, Finance and Audit Committee. Uh, the next meeting will be October 27th at 5 p.m. Next up, the Policy Committee, Director Gould. No report. Thank you very much. Board member questions and comments. And we will start with Director Jones. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam President. Um, basically, two, two areas. I would like to... Uh, I would give a thanks to senior staff, your senior staff, who uh, helped catch me up on a few of the items. Uh, that would be Chief Bailey, Chief Mitchell, uh, Chief Wagman, as well as uh, Mr. O'Toole. Uh, I appreciate your time and efforts to answer my questions and to uh, update me on numbers and reports. So thank you very much, very thorough, I appreciate that. And. Uh, the, we had our Rancho two by two that was very successful. I am sorry to see Cyrus uh, retire because he's been a, a very staunch supporter of Metro Fire. Uh, we wish him all the best in that. And then we do have our two by two with the county coming up next week. And again, uh, proceeding, continuing to maintain our relationships and have very productive back and forth discussion about issues. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Director Rice, would you like to make any comments tonight? Thank you, Madam President. And um, I, I finally made it on. Modern technology is just amazing. Um, I just I wanted to congratulate all, um, not only on the good job that's being done on behalf of Metro Fire, but um, I, I really appreciate all of the uh, support staff and everybody um, that works behind the scenes to make this machine go. And um, I'm continually amazed. And I just want to let everybody know promotions, uh, retirements. Uh, I wish everybody the best. Secondarily, uh, Madam President, we talked briefly, but this is um, uh, Cancer Awareness Month in November. And I do want to begin to socialize in front of the board. Um, uh, 
uh, SB 1127 was just signed by the governor, and that is a form of workers' compensation reform that specifically uh, addresses uh, workers' compensation and our cancer uh, presumptives for firefighters. And probably one of the more frustrating events for me um, has been watching our members um, over the last 30 years not have an easy uh, time in the comp system and the comp carriers have figured out um, all they need to do is deny claims and one of two things is going to happen. Um, the person's going to go away and go to their private insurance or they're going to die. And they, they do have a number of those instances, not Metro Fire, but in the California Fire Service where the members passed away before they were uh, even done with their comp process. And where I'm going with this and I know that recruiting is an issue all over the state of California, a good contract, good working conditions, all those things are highly important, but it's going to be the little things that are going to bring people to Metro Fire. And one of the things that I am going to be proposing in a resolution is that if we have any member on a, a cancer diagnosis, um, that they immediately go on workers comp that they're immediately put on 4850 as appropriate and they concentrate on getting better and i'll tell you the reason that i have this hard line um feeling towards this is i i did actually do this with metro fire it's been over a decade and it was very frustrating we had a member um that had in her terms simple breast cancer and she had a single mastectomy and chemo and radiation and uh, she was determined uh cancer free but the frustrating part was that i could not get the comp carrier nor the department to recognize it as presumptive and the same laws were in effect 10 years ago as they are today and that's what's going to separate us from everybody else is beginning to take care of our members in these areas um, that generally uh, people slip through the cracks. So I intend to be very aggressive on our presumptives. And, um, you know, the, the simple issue is this cancer presumptive and cardiac presumptives have been in place. So cancer in particular for 40 years, four zero, 40 years. You can't tell me that a workers' comp company can't in less than 48 hours say, um, we agree it's presumptive or you, you damn well better present your case that it's not. And, and I would like to position Metro Fire to be an agency that says we're not going to put up with that with our insurance uh, carriers or our third party administrators, we're gonna take care of our people. So with that, you can tell I'm pretty passionate about it, but that's one of the things that we have to do is take care of the men and women that take care of us. And with that, I'm concluded, Madam President, thank you so much. Thank you, Director Rice. <clears throat> um, Director Sheets. Good evening, I have no comment tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Director Sheets. I hope you get well soon. Director Wood. Two Thank thanks. You. No Thank you. Uh, it's Director Gold. Ditto. Thank you. Director White. I would also just like to thank everybody at Metro Fire, regardless of your role for the work you do day in and day out. Uh, I happen to be in Utah right now with a retired member of the department who not only finished uh, first in the national championships for the last three years in his age group, but is here competing at the Worlds, uh, Mark Van Brunt, and I want to wish him well on his uh, race tomorrow, which he tells me will be his final year of competition, and this year also marks the 30th year of the Firefighter Combat Challenge, which is a pretty significant milestone. So I want to congratulate Mark, wish him well uh, tomorrow, and thank everybody for the job you do. I do appreciate uh, Director White, or excuse me, Director Bryce bringing up the uh, cancer comp claim concerns and issues. So thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, Director White. <clears throat> Director Clark. Madam Chair, thank you. I. Um, would like to uh, thank everyone, everyone for the reports. Uh, um, congratulations to the retirees. I especially want to comment on the um, um, VP Cole 
mentioned about the uh, United the Legends of uh, Golf tournament. Uh, this tournament is uh, for uh, our food closet, which also uh, helps our family needy families during uh, Christmas. It gives them uh, you know packages. We buy toys for the kids. They get a, a basket of food, which is <laughs> these days with inflation and everything going on, it's, it's even more important. Uh, and I especially want to thank uh, uh, Brian Gifford, uh, Frank uh, Valenti, Jordan Majestic for uh, barbecuing, which helped the, uh, these guys showed up after work, after they, they, they got off their shift to uh, man the barbecue and they did an excellent job, which uh, made, the, made the thing, the, 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 um, the event successful. I also like to thank uh, United Way and uh, Central Labor Council for their effort because they, they really put on a, a, they did a great job. That's all I have in that. Thank you, Director Clark. Tonight, I'm not going to have any comments as you can tell I'm losing my voice. So we will now um, go to session. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> And then we can have council Lava report out. Please. Uh, thank, you. thank you, President Sailors. Uh, the board met in closed session uh, with respect to item number one on the agenda. The board, the board uh, voted unanimously to uh, provide uh, settlement authority to uh, its attorney and third party administrator to effectuate a settlement of the workers' compensation claim uh, involving uh, employee Doug Dolezal. Uh, next, number two. Um, uh, the board met in closed session to discuss industrial disability retirement uh, for employee Brian Curry. Uh, no reportable action was taken. That will be uh, uh, taken up now in uh, open session. Uh, the board also met in closed uh, session to consider uh, the industrial disability retirement of Richard Turner. No reportable action was taken, and that will also be taken up as an action item in open session tonight. Uh, the board also met with its uh, labor negotiator for the uh, represented employee organizations set forth uh, in agenda item number three. The board voted unanimously to approve a to approve a tentative agreement between the district and local 522 for those represented labor groups. Uh, finally, the board met in closed session with respect to item number four on the agenda, uh, fire chief selection process. Uh, I am authorized to report that with the retirement of Chief Harms, uh, the board has decided to undertake a process to appoint an interim fire chief. The board has developed a process for interview, appointment, and employment of an inter interim fire chief, which will take place over the coming weeks. Anyone who is interested uh, in this position should go to the district's website for further information. And that's all I have. Thank you. So now we will do our action item number three. Industrial Disability Retirement for Brian L. Curry. Um, can I get a motion and a second on that item? I'll make a motion to adopt staff's recommendation, Madam Chair. Second. second. Madam Clerk, we have a motion and a second. Will you call the Director Gould? Aye. Wood? Aye. Sheets? Aye. Sorry, aye. And Director Rice, I think he is not with, he's absent right now. Jones? Aye. Director White is also absent. Director Clark? Aye. And Sailors? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item, industrial disability retirement for Richard F. Turner. May I get a motion in the second, please? I'll make that motion that we adopt staff's recommendation for second. Mr. Turner. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Director Gould? Aye. Wood? Aye. Sheets? Aye. Jones? Aye. Clark? Aye. And Sailors? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Hey, Good work, everybody. Hey, guys.